Shout out to the old school back in the days. Missing all the good times. Don't let the memories fade. Wow, look at all that. That's a, that's a thing of beauty. You are listening to News and Views coming to you from Radio Regent. We are actually live again this week after a week of a pretty heavy kerfuffle. Um, it's good to be back. Hello out there for the, for the watchers. Um, this is News and Views with Ryan, Dylan, and Jesse. We are coming to you... Uh, from Daniel Spectrum in Regent Park, out into the world, news and views. What we are is a weekly half-hour program for those who want to get behind headlines for analysis, maybe some days interviews, and some alternative perspectives from a decidedly progressive point of view. We have an interview today. Ooh. Each week, special documentaries and discussions. Well, documentaries to come, hopefully, in the future. Exploring important stories internationally, regionally, and locally. As in all things Radio Regent, the program is dedicated to inclusivity, diversity, and positivity. Well, here we are. Nice yeah. to be joined by you folks. Nice to be here. Yeah. Beautiful day. Oh, yeah. It's, it feels like spring. Yeah. It's finally here, right? Yeah. Dylan, Jesse, do you think it's going to snow again? Yes. At least twice. Okay. It's, it's only April. So, <laughs> as I say, every other week. True. Once May hits, it's real spring. Right, and there's no going back, but uh, not yet, not yet. Shall we take a mere meander at our official weather? Let's a glance. Glance, thank you. A glance. We're gonna go to Billy Bishop like we normally do. Yeah, why not? All right, let's go here. God, I can't hear anything out of these things. So, can't hear the hands. Hey, uh, look at that. Nine degrees right now uh, at the closest government weather site that we can possibly get. Um, Look at those suns all across the week. No, no non-sun symbols, and also plenty of double digits, which I am very happy about. Um, nine now, uh, but zero overnight, um, with only a few clouds. Tomorrow, high of seven, mainly sunny. But then overnight tomorrow, a negative five. So that's a bit chilly. Um, for your Easter weekend, it's going to be sun, but you know, not uh, not super temperatures. Maybe by Monday. Potentially 18 degrees. That's what I'm seeing on hmm. this board. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see about that, I suppose. Hmm. Cool. You mentioned Easter, which is soon to be um, upon us. But, it is. Uh, it's it also is... one of more than one thing right. that will be upon us. All happening together at the same time this year. Ramadan. Is it unusual for these things to all be at the same time? Because I don't know anything about anything. No, it happens every year, same time. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> like I, I barely even remember when Easter is, let alone like Ramadan, Passover, Easter. They all come. Yeah, it's the it's the spring rejuvenation, propagation, copulation, Ooh. like holiday time, right? Yes, these yes. cultures all come like from these kind of similar crux periods where it's like, hey, look, it's a time of significance. Let's right. celebrate it somehow. I'll say, <laughs> yeah. Um, on that subject, we got some some lists of things that are open and closed over the next few days, which might be useful if you're hoping to do. I some, love that uh, you put this list here. Procuring, cool. yeah. Okay. Uh, What's open? Alcohol. <laughs> All wine wax street stores will be open for yeah. the wine drinkers. On the subject of this, I'm thinking like let's. There's a lot in this document, so yeah. why don't we just say which things are closed? Because okay, good idea. If you know it's open and you think it's open, you would go anyway. You know that's one thing, but like let's just. Scroll, right. scroll a bit to the things that are closed. Oh, oh you missed some. Oh, 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 where are we? Where are we? What's closed? Thank you. On tomorrow, all LCBO and beer store locations, as well as wine racks in grocery stores. So that's Friday. Yep. Good Friday. Uh, groceries, all Costco stores are closed. Uh, oh, dear. We've been talking about dear Loblaws. <laughs> They will be closed. Most of them. Most um, of them. Fortino's TNT supermarkets, which are owned by Loblaws, and I learned that recently, uh, as well as Zayers will be closed. And it's recommended to customers to go online to check out their local store. I know the No Frills Dear Me is not going to be open tomorrow. Hey, here's a place I never shop at. It sounds very posh. <laughs> I, I know of that place because my, my uh, roommate works adjacent to them. How do you say that? Pusateri's. Okay. Yeah. Pusateri's at Yorkville on Eaton Center will be closed. Um, all banks in Canada post stuff closed tomorrow. All government offices and all Toronto Public Library branches oh, will my. also be closed tomorrow. Okay. What about um, shopping? If people want to go shopping on tomorrow. Haha. <laughs> 
No shopping for you. No, no Fairview, no Sherway, no Don Mills, no Yorkdale, no yeah. Scarborough Town Center, no Dufferin Mall, and no Bayview Village. Sucks to be a capitalist. Local convenience stores are open. Oh, beautiful. Cool. All of them? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Either buy your milk. Yeah. Yes, yes. Support your little stores. Or uh, uh, soy uh, almond beverage. Right. Non-dairy alternative. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, what else, my friend? So, um, so here we got Sunday, but... What's closed on Sunday is possibly the same stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the same stuff that we just said is closed tomorrow is also going to be closed on Sunday. Um, now, the burning question, Monday. Yeah, Monday's the weird one. Yeah. Like, only stuff that's not open Monday is, like, government. Okay. It's like a bank holiday. Okay. I think. I think that's what I'm seeing here, anyway. Cool. This is coming to you from Toronto uh, CTV News. So... Oh, look at this. Things to do. The Aga Khan Museum. Uh, one of my uh, colleagues was saying there's a, a wonderful exhibit going on there um, of Middle Eastern art and fabric and textiles. I think the whole museum is that. True, but there's a special focus, I believe, this oh. year. A special focus, or at this time, on Afghanistan art. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but you're right. You're right. Um, um, yeah, so that's an option. Mm -hmm. um, might be full. What about the Ago? <laughs> Open the until AGO? the late hour of four. The AGO? <laughs> Ago. That's a, that's a museum. Yeah, you're right. You're it right. is, it is. I was being silly. Interesting that it says, you know, the AGO is open tomorrow, but it doesn't specifically say all the other museums in the city. True. I don't know whether or not they would be open, but huh. I guess there's only one way to find out, which is to go to their website. or huh. Oh, something huh? happening April 11th. Happening. It's either the Raptors or the Leafs home opener, and uh, Go Transit will be freezing right during it. So, terms of scheduling. Whoa. If you are hoping to come down to a game, or if you're just looking to take free rides. Wow. Cool. That's, uh, okay. That's Good unusual. Do you know what the distance is? Like the it's radius? The whole, it's the whole system of Go Transit. Everything everywhere? I mean, if, if you're coming down to the game from, uh, you know, like uh, Grimsby. Uh, west, yeah, you're covered. If you're coming down from uh, Wow Belleville, you're good to go. Hmm. Awesome. After nine o'clock. So, like, if you watch the game at home and then you want to go down to see if anybody won from Toronto, then you're going to celebrate. You can get down there for free. And it's at home. Oh, wow. it's it, yeah, that might be fun and energizing, but it's also wild. They just don't want anybody to drink and drive. No, that, that's yeah, that's a good call and good on good on Go and MetroLink for right. doing something right for once and offering this. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, very cool. Uh, Jesse, we were just touching on uh, yesterday, the fact that, uh, COVID is not really being chatted about so much in the media right now. Not like it used to be. Right. Uh, should we talk a little bit about our Regent Park, uh, COVID wellness clinics? We can give the, we can give the, the salient out. points quickly. Okay. Why not? Touch on that. Yeah. So there's three, there's three clinics in the Regent Park area, uh, most of which have some kind of, um, stuff related to covid um but from, from this i cannot see didn't we we found somewhere oh it was in fred's news uh could you scroll down for me oh from nope. here yes i need to okay. see the flyers because there's not enough info oh of course okay yeah, show me show go. me these nightmares there we go <laughs> okay so every wednesday at 40 oak street and every saturday at 40 oak street uh -huh. there are uh some walk-in services relating to you know physical health and uh viruses and stuff okay. um these things include cold, flu, and COVID testing and treatments. Although I think the vaccines are only available on Saturday. And Wednesday is a walk-in only. See, this is why they order it like this, because there's too much inconsistency. I'm starting okay. over. Okay. Every Wednesday at 40 Oak Street, you can walk in for cold, flu, COVID testing, and treatment. Okay. Um, this is all the typical symptoms. There's also blood and diabetes checkup. Okay. This is 3 to 6 p.m. On Saturdays at the same location, it's walk-in and appointment for cold and flu vaccine and blood pressure and diabetes. But this is in the morning. This is at 9.30 a.m. until 12.30 in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, we don't have a health card. No status. Uninsured. They may be able to help. So do not fret. Show yes. up. Yeah. That's unlike a lot of other places where you need uh, you yeah. need that evidence. There's also a clinic on Thursday, um, which is walk-in and appointments. And that's at 465 Dundas, which is from 1 to 6 p.m. And it's basically the same stuff. Um, and at the the same the same level of availability and accessibility cool um i admire your attention to detail dear jesse with very what? good with well you, you know you picked apart that flyer very well oh. and <laughs> gave <laughs> out the information because it's the first time i've looked at it true <laughs> um glad we mentioned that yeah 
Coming a little bit forward um, in the month, Saturday, April 29th, there is a women's soccer tournament at Regent Park South Ice Rink between 4 and 8 o'clock p.m. Got a really, really cool poster here with some young sports stars uh, playing some soccer. Information can be found at info at tfaa.ca. So, so you... I think that's an email address because it has an at in it. Websites don't have ats. I said info. Like, you know, people can email. Did, what did I say? You said in, information can be found at. Okay, thanks. So, I mean, I'm, I'm being a bit pedantic, but, like, don't try to go to this. And I was even trying to figure out, like, how can we find out more? Because this poster is all we have to go on. There's not that much information in the poster. True. Like, <laughs> there's not, you know, who can play, how to play, how to True. sign up, whatever. All that we know is it's seven versus seven and ten players max. Right. So if you'd like to find out more. Email uh, them. Yes. Email that address. Info at TFAA, was it? Yes. T fa ca there's also a phone number uh phone number is 437-434-8322 and thank you for the clarity on that jesse bingo um something okay. else happening in the community not too far from what day is it now it's it's two weeks and two days away i think uh regent park community cleanup on saturday april 22nd cool uh this is from 10 a.m to noon and it's at the bake oven and, you know, I had to look that up. Because I think Easy Bake Oven when I hear that. The Bake Oven, you know, I put the information as to where it was and now it's gone. But the Bake Oven is across from the Recycling Center. Ugh. No, let me just look it up while you... <laughs> I think it's in Regent Park. Like, yeah. actual Regent Park. The park, not the area, right? Like, right. across the street from us. The Blacksburg uh, Regent Park Oven. The oven is located north wall... Of new greenhouse slash parks storage buildings. That's okay. what the bake oven is. Okay. I believe. This is one of the like the uh, the public bake ovens that exist yes. in the city of Toronto. You know, certain parks have these, which is pretty cool. Oh. Um, but yeah, that's where this one is yeah. starting, I guess. That's where they're meeting to begin. Um, I'm sure if you just look around, the big, big group of people with yeah. like cleaning stuff, you yeah. know, like gloves and the grabby the grabby arms and, yeah. and garbage bags and all that kind of wholesome I, thing. I think that's a really good good thing to do because, like, there's garbage everywhere always in Toronto. And sometimes, like, that garbage is dangerous and hazardous. Yes. There's things that can hurt you. So gloves are important. Yes. Um, also bring your own water bottle. Cool. Um, you can also drop off black plastic takeout containers, which are clean at this event, as well as textiles. Um, the note about the black plastic is... Uh, Black plastic is the downfall of Toronto's Skynet. It can't be recycled in the city, which is really weird and annoying because a lot of containers that one gets from takeout are those, you know, those ubiquitous black plastic right. circles with the maple leaf on the bottom. Right. And like, those are garbage, unfortunately. I did not know that. Yeah. Tell your friends that you can't recycle those. Like it's, it leads to contamination of recycling actually. And Ouch. that's like, it's not just that the thing. Yeah can't be recycled when you put it in the recycling, but it can, it potentially can like contaminate a whole bunch of recycling that they just, you know, will probably scrape off and put into a, a fire or okay. whatever. Okay. We don't want that. Or a landfill. Yeah. No, it's bad. Okay. <laughs> and you know, most people don't know this because municipalities yeah. always vary between what is and what is not recyclable. Ha ha. Huh. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, should we? Yeah, let's do that. So those, those were our kind of more, more immediate and pressing region park things. Um, mm -hmm. But you have some interesting content. Yeah. Both here and also in the room That's as right. a corollary as a thing. That's right. This I'm... is where I shut up. And, no. You know, I mean, I, this is your time. This is, <laughs> this is, this is your content. I'm okay. very excited to engage and find out about this. I haven't seen this video yet. Cool. Yeah. Just a, just a tiny mention. I was working on a project. Um, it was a, a mock project where we had to come up with um, a bill. And we wanted to create a Toronto Warming Centers bill. Um, so the project was all about finding how to get funding and how to build a campaign. And I had the awesome opportunity of interviewing our friend and host, Dylan Woolacoot, all about, um, what it's like for the unhoused community, especially when rain, heavy rain falls. Dylan, can I play your interview and then you can chat about it? Sure. Let's take a look. Let's do it. There was some heavy rain yesterday. Hey, it's Dylan. <laughs> hey, it's this room. Region Park Focus with Dylan Woolacoot and you, sir, uh, work within the community. I wanted to ask you a little bit about warming centers. What do you know about them? Well, as far as I understand, um, 
there's definitely been a need for them over the past couple of years with weather getting more inclement and more severe mm -hmm. uh, as climate change makes its continual uh, unhalting grind globally. Mm -hmm. uh, but more specifically in North America and in Canada and uh, Toronto specifically, uh, the warming centers are so important because the shelters have reached, I believe, 97% capacity, leaving little to no room for anybody who is still out there on the street mm -hmm. to have access to a place overnight, mm -hmm. uh, let alone just for a short amount of time to warm up during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and the argument that was made by certain council members on the absolute refusal to continue the extension of these warming centers is that one, they couldn't afford it, mm -hmm. which is, I don't really agree with. I'm yeah, sure there seems there to be is. an issue of money, right? They, they keep saying it's a different level of government that's responsible. Yeah, so when it comes to these monetary issues that they claim are the main reasons why it's not possible, I would challenge them and say, obviously, there's funding in which is not being accessed. Right. It's just not being allocated to the proper resources for the proper people. And now their second argument was that Although it's not too cold, inclement weather does not only include severe cold temperatures, it also includes rain, precipitate, mm -hmm. precipitous weather, snow, mm -hmm. ice. All these conditions have a direct and heavy impact on the people who are not able to access the shelters. Mm -hmm. But also, if you're out there and you don't have a shelter and you don't have a tarp or something to protect your stuff, not only is what you have and the small amount of things that you do have going to be destroyed by the weather, but if you manage to make it through the storm with all of that wet, frozen, icy possessions of yours, the chances are, with the little sun that we've seen this winter, mm. that the majority of your stuff that you're carrying with you will be destroyed due to mold and other kinds of issues. And the problem with that is, with what little that some of our homeless people on the streets have, they are then faced with the issue of keeping the few things that they have and wearing them despite the fact that they may contain things like mold. Mm -hmm. That will lead to more sickness of these people that are already so vulnerable and needing of our services. Thank you for that awesome interview. I like how you spoke about some things that Torontonians don't think about. Yeah, it's crazy. Do you guys remember the other night when it was like thunderstorms and 70 kilometer hour winds? I do. Imagine, I don't. Imagine being out in the park. I can't. Like, I don't remember the last time I was woken up by thunder, which was like the other morning. And I was <laughs> like, shit, man. The wind blew my door of my balcony open. What? From left. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh. So imagine now you're in Moss Park and you got that winds coming at you. There's some uh, teepees in Moss Park. There's some tents. Now you're, you're not tied down. Like your stuff is gone. Right. Yeah, and I remember talking about this. Like, well, I guess I guess at this point it's some months ago. How there's like the the temperature threshold for when the warming center is let people in, which was like, you know, minus whatever. But like, it's plenty cold at zero degrees. Right. Zero right. degrees with a seventy km an hour winds gives you a wind chill of minus six degrees. Yeah. And, you know, the inclement weather thing, too, it's a really good point because, yeah, what if it's plus six, but it's pouring rain like it was yesterday yeah, all in yeah. the morning? And, you know, what if it's even like, you know, in the summertime, I guess, I guess the argument in the summer is like lots of things are open and you can just go in to like the path or whatever and experience some air conditioning. But somebody's going to shuffle you out of there, too. You know? Yeah. The biggest problem is the weekends. Nothing's open for services on the weekend. Churches Monday through Friday give their stuff. Oh. Organizations Monday through Friday give their stuff. The longest part of the week for people experiencing homelessness is Saturday to Monday morning. Hmm. This is a time where they have to rely on spare change from passers-by. There are no weekend uh, organizations with services, as far as I know. Hmm. That's wild. So like... people are in more danger over the weekend. Uh, shelters are full. People are trying to find food. People sometimes have to resort to stealing food from the grocery store, unfortunately, but that's uh, either survival or getting on your back kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the sector. I mean, like, I would say that even people who are not immediately threatened with issues of, like, being under or unhoused are also kind of being driven to the point of, like, 
I need to steal certain things from the self checkout these days because I can't afford all of the stuff that I normally buy because hey these fr this bag of frozen vegetables has jumped up twenty five percent in price over like over the course of the last week or whatever right and like, I need socks that are twice the price that they were last year exactly <laughs> and it's like yeah inflation's going up a lot and etc but like you know fifteen dollars is not fifteen dollars last year is not worth thirty dollars now like it's not commensurate whatsoever and then you have good old Galen Weston yeah. now making 50% more than he was last year and complaining simultaneously about how they're losing money on all these products. It's like, uh, it's so yeah, vile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 15 dollars at the grocery store is your milk, juice, and eggs. That's it. Yeah, it's hardly anything. Like, I, I remember a time when I would be like, "Oh man, look at all this stuff I got for 15 bucks." And now I'm like, "This is all I got for 15 bucks? Like, what? What happened? I bought like three things, as you said." Well said. It should be interesting to see how Toronto does or doesn't continue to talk about warming centers and homelessness needs um, because it's the summer. I find because summertime happens. You know, mm. people say, or there's a vibe of like, okay, people are going to be okay. But winter's going to come again, isn't it? Well, also, like, extreme weather events are becoming more common regardless of the season. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's that's the trick is people people think, oh, global warming is going to be warmer all the time. Like, that's not how it pans out on, like, the tangible level, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's how it is overall. The planet is getting warmer. But, like, what we see is more frequent and more extreme weather events. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a couple years ago, Towns just burning down in BC right. that are like in the mountains and not traditionally hot places. And right. it's like, okay, well, this summer in Toronto is supposed to be like a scorcher, which yeah. is, you know, last summer I felt like it was fairly mild, but Oof. there's always heat waves every year. Right. And like, given how warm this winter was, like, I don't know if this is how, you know, large weather patterns work, but I'm right. like, I'm gearing up for it to be 30 degrees a lot. And, right. you know, that's like not so hot for me. Right. But, I'm a lizard and skinny and have a house that is yeah. like pretty, pretty well insulated. Yeah. Um, so it's a very different situation for people who don't fill that exact set of criteria. True. <laughs> Did you hear about the, uh, how California got a thousand millimeters of rain within a few days? Uh, the natural atmospheric aquifers were empty. Whoa. California. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this is getting it, scary. Lake Tahoe, uh, all the way down to, Los Angeles, yeah. San Diego. Uh, did okay. you? That that's really crazy. I saw I saw a video of that. And I was shocked. Um, CSIS has actually said that uh, global warming is a threat to national security <laughs> because they're saying that even in issues of like Vancouver, like the wealthy homes that are by the water are going to become flooded oh first. Oh my god! Yes, they think that they're going to get violent. How dare the rich have to pay first? <laughs> well said. unspeakable <laughs> guys i just got a pump in we are coming out of uh radio regent kindly through regent park focus media center and this is news and views with jesse ryan and dylan you got a little under 10 minutes left on this program but we're here every week uh doing the same things as we usually do um let's see well i mean does, did, does Dylan have any magic that he wants to add to? Yeah, to Ryan, Ryan and I got this big page yeah. of oh, stuff. Cool. But, uh, Can I share like a personal thing that's happening in a couple of weeks? Yeah, sure. As long as it's there, as long as it's news and views worthy. Yeah, yeah, news and views worthy. So I'm gonna jump into my first uh, stand-up comedy thing. Whoa. Uh, on 420. Uh, never stood up before and told jokes, but uh, I heard that the hardest part about doing stand-up is standing up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where are you? Where are you performing? <laughs> Uh, the Groove uh, out of Danforth, just west of Woodbine. Cool. Uh, wow, that's on, near my house. On April 20th, uh, 9.30 p.m., there is a comedy for open mic beginners. Cool. Hey. So I met somebody uh, on one of my evenings out, and she happened to be a booker for The Groove. And I must have made her laugh or smile or something. Huh. And, uh, <laughs> she gave me a spot. So. Oh, oh, nice. Good uh, for you. That's, that's actually uh, two weeks from today, if I'm not mistaken. So that'll yeah. be a Thursday night after News and Views. Yep, cool. That's right. So uh, two weeks from today, everybody uh, listen to the show after you're done listening, have some dinner, make your way down to the groove. Did you say what time it starts already? Uh, 930, I believe. I Maybe I'll be opening. I'm not sure. Ooh. So you might have to Whoa. stick around for the whole show. Cool. <laughs> show up early, stay late. That's it. I admire you. That takes some serious chutzpah, but I know you have it. <laughs> I was writing earlier today, actually, portions of what I'm hoping to say, and I stopped writing because I didn't want to embellish and destroy the whole set. Mm. <laughs> you want to leave some to spontaneity. Yes. Great. Okay. 
well, break a leg. Hopefully, we'll see you on stage there. Looking forward. To yeah, if I'm if I'm if I'm free and able, I would like to come check that out. Yeah. Um, we're coming close close to that time. Why it just flies by? Yep. I love this show <laughs> because you know it doesn't uh. feel like now that we have you know we've got another voice here. It's it's very you know it feels like we're just talking. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not painstaking. Which is great. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of things that we can kind of like toss in at the last minute. Um, yeah. Oh. Hey, there's a case of bird flu in Ontario. Watch out. But it's not really typically that transmissible to humans. Yeah, um, that was terrifying. It was, uh, it was a dog caught it and died after attacking a goose or something. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> this is, your dogs chew on dead geese. Yeah, uh, put your dog on a leash, please. Most people don't, and that leads to lots of problems like this. Sure. Um, hopefully, it'll be fine. You know, monkeypox kind of fizzled out. I was I was expecting that they were just trying to keep it on the wraps until it exploded, but it didn't. So that's good. Maybe this will also not be a big deal. What about meningococcal? Isn't that like always a thing, though? I guess so. It just didn't really blow up. Yeah, I mean, I think most people already are vaccinated against it. Like, hmm. I think I have mine. Um, I don't know. Stay up to date on your shots and hmm. don't handle carcasses without proper protection. Don't let your dogs bite these. Don't let your dogs handle carcasses at all. <laughs> there wasn't too much East End Regent Park news this week, but that's not a, that's not a terrible thing. No, because, I mean, oftentimes what we are able to come across tends to not be great news. Um, mm -hmm. And we, you know, we're trying to kind of not feed that overly unnecessarily negative narrative. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm oh, just poking around. Oh, Go for it. Dylan's got uh, something. There is a uh, Easter dinner tonight in the basement of Young Street Missions. Uh, oh, that's great news. Davis Center, I believe, by the library on the northwest corner of Parliament and Gerard. That's so great that you mentioned that. Do you okay. have a time? Four till six. Look at that. Okay, so, so it's happening show, It's happening right now. Down there and have a quick dinner. Yeah, so, um, if you're listening right now, you can head over there. Yeah, if you're looking for some nice Easter eats. I right. think it's actually the southwest. Wait, no. The it's, Toronto it's, Public Library is southwest. Yeah. And Davis is north. Oh, okay. It's adjacent sorry, north, to. Northwest, sorry. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, that's uh, that's solid. Um, solid. Let's see. We don't have time for that. There is maybe some new housing legislation that has already been tabled. It was set to be tabled a few hours ago when I looked this up and. What is going on here, Jesse? Uh, well, this hasn't been updated. Anyway, a bunch of new legislation that they say is designed to... Oh, look at all these ads, Jesus. Um, it's it's supposed to be helping renters, so they say. Um, actually, I think this has been changed. Um, some of the, some of the uh, things introduced in, in the legislation were things trying to protect renters from things like rent evictions, um, where basically... Yeah, what? It's not here anymore. This this is a completely different article than it was when I uh, people are getting when, when I dropped the link in because I guess it's been updated. That's that's weird how news like, unlike the days of print media, it's not like you print a newspaper that's solid and then the next day you have a different. Like I literally am opening the same article that I opened a few hours ago and it's not the same piece of news anymore. Um, it's been edited. Yeah, it's been it's been made to catch up with the times in real time. Yeah, uh, and can we mention the monetization factor on these news? website yeah it's just like, like there's so a much thing. Art, so much commercials everywhere. hey look the aga Khan museum sponsored by <laughs> we were just talking about okay. that um trying to protect renters from rent evictions where it's like you should be able to move back into the original price within six months and if right. you don't you have like a year or whatever to levy a complaint with the ltb fun times you know wait another ten thousand years for that to go through um and also like doubling of fines for like infractions against legislation to quite a lot of money. I think now it's like $50,000 for individuals and 100000 for uh, businesses or okay. something like that. I don't know. I Maybe can't, we uh, can expand more on this uh, next week as well. But, yeah. You know, things will change. Yeah. I mean, things things are always changing. So, mm. And the one thing that is always changing is the time. And I see that we're already nearly at that time. Okay. I don't think there's enough time to shoehorn in anything else. I think we've shoehorned in enough as we can this week. Okay. Um, real quick, what are people doing this weekend? I am going to try and relax, ride my new bike, do a little bit of family time. Dylan. I'm hoping my bike's ready for the road as well. I'm going to see my dad and go see my aunt. Beautiful. Jesse. No plans yet. Possibly no plans at all, but maybe see a friend or two. A little bit of chillaxing. Same as usual. Don't you have a skylight in that house? There is, there is a skylight. Actually, there are two skylights in my house, but one is in one of my roommate's rooms. 
Okay, well, that's still really nice. You can just look up at the skylight all day. Yeah. Sometimes no plans are good plans. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes we need to rest. Oh, preach. There's a little too much of that for me, but uh, <laughs> that's usually like every other day besides today. <laughs> Thank you for checking out News and Views with Ryan. Dylan. And Jesse. We'll be back again next week. We have been coming to you through Radio Regent, uh, as well as yeah, YouTube, possibly, if you are catching the video version, which I have not been paying. I never pay attention to the cameras. I liked it better when they were like cross-sectional. I'm still in yours, but hmm. you should be more in mine. I'm going to just... Worries. Boom. Look at that. Thank you for joining us. Radio Regent. See you next week.